I've asked Julie to share testimony for you all because a few weeks ago she came up to me and um, I didn't know her very well. She found me after church and she was like, I think I'm supposed to tell you my testimony. And I was like, I would love to hear it. And she shared it. And I thought, somebody else needs to hear this too. And so I asked her if she would very courageously share with you all her testimony. And I know that it's for somebody here. And maybe for you, it may be for you to find hope for that person that you've been praying for for years. But I'm excited for you to hear it. Go ahead. Thank you, Mindy. Well, I was, uh, I was actually speaking to my mom and dad on Zoom because I was really overwhelmed about doing this. Um, and through the course of that conversation, my, my mother came kind of offhandedly with this, with this quote she had heard. She said, a beat up penny never loses its value. And she hit the nail on the head for me. I could stand up here for the rest of the day and tell you how bad my past was. It wasn't always that way. My dad was a deacon. Uh, my parents raised me. They were super conservative, uh, but they raised me with a, a very sound spiritual foundation that carried me through the trials of the rest of my life. But man, was I sheltered, like to the point where they edited the bad guys out of the Disney movies. So I had no idea how dark and cruel this world could be until I was 20 and I ex experienced an overwhelming loss and it consumed me. So I really just wish that I would lose myself completely or just die. And uh, that's when I turned to drugs and alcohol. Um, and when I say that I did drugs, my drug of choice was more. Um, I was an IV, meth, and heroin, and cocaine addict. And that's the route that my life went down for years to come because I just didn't know how to deal. Uh, I'm sorry. It got to the point where people around me actually told me, they're doing the same things as me, but they told me, you know, you might want to get some help. I'm like, <laughs> looking around the room I'm in and the people that are in it, and I'm like thinking to myself, and I had one of these glimmers, these moments where as foggy as I was and as out of it as I always was, I could feel God and I could hear his voice. And I was reminded that for whatever reason, he was still relentlessly pursuing me. And that something had to give. I didn't know how, I didn't know what. My life had been for, like this for so long. And unfortunately, my first solution was try to take my own life. And praise God, I didn't succeed. But I've been homeless for a couple of years at this point now. It was excruciatingly cold outside. I had overdosed multiple times. I had watched, watched my friends die. I had been in ever increasingly dangerous situations. I was committing serious crimes to support my habit, manufacturing the method I was using. I had been beaten and abused in every way that you could possibly imagine. But my second solution was to pray, knowing what I knew from childhood. And so I prayed, I told God, I, I can't take this anymore. And my prayer was answered, and it was pretty immediately, and it was in the super uncomfortable way that I was prepared for it to be in. I was wanted in multiple counties for many different crimes. And uh, I put myself in this place where my picture was posted all around town. I, my face was on the news. And the marshals came and arrested me, and uh, it was it was over. Um, and I've been in the back of a lot of cop cars. I'm not a, I'm not you know a proud of that fact, but this was the one time where we were speeding like only cops can do toward downtown Chattanooga to the jail, and I felt a sense of relief. It was over. I made up my mind then, and my attorney came. However, many months later, uh, they take their time. And the state's office, <laughs> this, the DA's office, their first office, 
First felonious offenses, 27 years. If that's not a gut punch. Unfortunately, uh, that, that's not the way that the story ended. I got a 10 year sentence. I served a little over a year of that um, in the prison and eight months of that was served in solitary because I was deemed unfit to be around other prisoners. I basically turned myself in a, into an animal. I had a huge problem with anger and aggression because of the things that I had gone through. And I saw somebody when they came in to make sure I was still there or to feed me. And I had all the time in the world that I needed to think in that cell over the last 10 years of my life. And I realized one day I had this moment of clarity and I felt connected to God. And I was just so overwhelmed with the fact that the things that I had done were spiritually worth a death sentence. Forget that 27 years. And I hit the floor of that cell and tears started streaming down my face. And I just asked God, I was like, if you will save me, if you will help me, I will dedicate the rest of my life to serving you. Because I know there's nothing you can't pull me out of. He hadn't turned his back on me, I had turned my back on him. And I will never forget those moments because I believe, I know, that that is when he made me into something completely new. So I was released from the prison. And I went into drug court and everybody said, you're going to fail. And I was like, no, I'm not. A year later, I graduated that program and I walked out of the courtroom <laughs> with my son by my side. And I knew that that was not me. I fully recognized in and of myself. I couldn't have done that. That was him. He had redeemed me and enabled me to to fulfill that commitment that I made in that jail cell a couple of years ago. And from there, I went on to earn my criminal justice degree. I worked in treatment centers. And I was the third person in the 20 year history of that drug court program to be offered a job by the judge to help other people change their lives. And I know, I know that Again, this, this wasn't me. It wasn't me. The person that I was was so incredibly broken. But God put me back together piece by piece into something more beautiful than I could have ever been before drugs and alcohol. He had never stopped loving me. I shouldn't be standing here on this stage telling you this story today. I should be dead or in prison somewhere. But he never stopped loving me. His grace was sufficient for me. His mercy covered me. And as beat up and as ugly as I was, he saved me. And it's so powerful to be able to stand up here in front of you guys and say, I know there's nothing I could have done to earn it. I definitely don't deserve it. But this is what it was before. And this is who I am today, all because of God's grace. Amazing. <laughs> Thank Amazing. You. Thank, you. Thank you so much, Thank Julia. You. One Thank more time. That was incredible. God is so good. We serve a God who exceeds our expectations. As Julie was meditating on her testimony last night, she just kept texting me. I'm just so overwhelmed, she said, with gratitude for my God. And so I don't know what it is that you need to ask God for, but I hope that you come to him this morning with expectations high because he can do above and beyond all you could ask or imagine for you and for the people that you love.